Welcome back to Casual Bias Rugby. It is the return. Of course, uh, I took a bit of a week off after the Rugby World Cup final. And with all the videos that I could have come back with, uh, Rossi being appointed, Eddie Jones going, some of the URC games, some of the Premiership games, all of those news that we'll have to wait for, for tomorrow. Because um, I'm coming back to something that has really been bothering me. So if you like the video, like and subscribe. It's going to be a bit of a rant. Because I'm so annoyed with World Rugby itself um, and who's running their social medias and, and running the content. Because truly, I, it's so annoying to say it, but I feel like World Rugby itself is, is killing the game, killing rugby by itself. And this all stems from uh, a video that Squid Rugby always puts out. Uh, doesn't matter the tournament, he'll, at the end, who's the winner, he'll, he'll make a video. So how did South Africa win the Rugby World Cup? How did the Stormers win the URC? How did, how did the Saracens win the Premiership? I'm just making examples. And what you got these higher up twats doing at the moment, they are literally not just copyright claiming uh, videos or content using footage of the World Cup, they are literally striking them. So if you don't know on YouTube, you can get three strikes and you're out. Uh, you're getting banned, your channel gets taken down or whatever, or you're banned for, for a certain uh, amount of time. Uh, and it's so, so annoying. Now, I understand if you if you copyright claiming or copyright striking um, people that just take your videos and post it just as that just like that. If you take a full rugby game, the full rugby World Cup final, and you post the two hour game, um, I understand if you do that. But you have people on TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all promoting the sport, um, and they've done it for years. So on, on, on TikTok, you have massive creators. I'm talking about in the thousands of, of uh, followers. Like, I'm not even big, but my engagement is big on, on TikTok. I mean, I've got a couple of videos that have got 100,000 views. I've got one that's got 500,000 views. Now, at least I don't use rugby footage. I just talk like I talk here, so it doesn't impact me necessarily. You have uh, Instagram uh, channels dedicated to analyzing uh, Rugby World Cup games. This is literally the footage and they are putting stuff over it, analyzing the game. You have Squid Rugby um, that is probably the biggest rugby YouTuber in the world at the moment. Uh, of course, you have other other massive names like Egg Chasers or um, what, what is his name? Alfred whatever. You, you know what I'm talking about or Two Cents Rugby. Uh, on TikTok you have um, the guys from the breakdown, the good, the bad, the rugby that post their clips and stuff. You have all these people trying to promote the sport. We're all talking about our rugby at the moment is in a stalemate. Um, we need more engagement. We need more eyes on the on the sport, and that's exactly the reason why we're going to have a World Cup in America. Um, there's a big thing. There's a big crowd and a big audience, a big demographic to be achieved when we go to America for the Rugby World Cup. That's why it's, there's massive focus on that World Cup. And we're talking about all this new eyes on the game, and yet we are, are, are stopping um, creators of the sport of posting content. Now, I understand, as I said, if you post the whole game, but we got people analyzing the game, just talking about the game. you got people literally posting a photo of the game on Twitter and it being taken down for copyright. Like, just just listen to this. I'm just going to read you the, the tweet of uh, Squid Rugby. Now, I posted um, the one video the day before yesterday, and he said, one week ago, Siakulisi's Immortals became uh, just the second side ever to retain the Rugby World Cup. So how did they do it? Just how close was their one-point win? And where uh, in the history of the game does this side deserve to rank? Everyone excited about it. It got a massive amount of views in just a short day. I can't even imagine how many new eyes a video like that could bring to the table. I think his previous one that he did about this, the previous World Cup, got in the millions of views. Um, and then literally a couple of hours later, he posted, After just a few hours up, the video has been taken down manually, manually by an employee of World Rugby and copyright strike given to the channel. Some 60 plus hours of work went into that video. Uh, so rest assured, we shall try and our utmost to get it restored but this is not in our hands. I mean, that is just absolutely disgraceful. You have all these people trying to grow the game except for one, and that is World Rugby itself. 
Now, I don't know how true this is, but this is another tweet. Breaking. World Rugby continue their copyright crusade, which is literally a video of Friends get... Uh, friends... The Friends, the TV show that's famous on Netflix um, at the moment. Ross gets pummeled in a rugby game. Literally, there's just a scene of them playing rugby. Now, if, even if it's not true, I wouldn't even be surprised if, it's, if they somehow got away to, to copyright claiming this. We are all trying to grow this sport. No one has malicious intent... Um, with the videos but it's such a narcissistic selfish um, board of directors at the moment just claiming everything it's let these people get their sense okay it's not they're not taking taking money from you okay you have you have literally got americans for example who's massive on football american football um Reacting to the first time to rugby, rugby highlights. They're just watching rugby highlights, giving their first initial reaction. They enjoy it. That's massive, massive eyes going onto, onto that channel. Okay, because they don't always react to rugby channels. They have, for instance, music reactions. Now they're reacting to a rugby video with the big hits and stuff, and it gets taken down by World Rugby. Those stuff get a massive amount of views. Those things push up to 300,000 views. Now, let's say a third of those are American. That's 100,000 new eyes on the game. But we are just striking that so that the creator that puts out that content literally feels, okay, well, I'm not going to put out the content because I'm not earning anything from it. So I have to invest time and everything, get viewers onto my channel, promote this game, but I'm not getting anything in return. And that is exactly what World Rugby is doing. You are taking footage away and the, and, and the money away from those guys that they don't even, even want to promote the game. They did it out of, out of the kindness of their heart. They get the hard-earned money from YouTube. They're not taking money out of your pocket or anything. They're just taking it from YouTube. That's, that's their job. And you're just doing what you want. I mean, it's so selfish. It's all from, from the higher ups. And World Rugby has been disgraceful throughout the World Cup as well. We spoke about the injuries. When it comes to the Tier 2 nations, players get banned way longer for headshots on, on big teams' players than the big teams get on their own players. Or the Tier 1 play, uh, nations get on the Tier 1 nations. For instance, um, who was the guy from Namibia that that crushed uh, Dupont's jaw. I thought it was a fake injury anyway, because you're not coming back within two weeks to play a quarterfinal. Look at my pimpy's face, still, after his game against Tonga. Think about the ban um, that that guy, excuse me, I can't remember the name. Look at the ban that that man got, just because he, he, he smashed the poster boy's face by accident. Then you have other players, for, for instance, Owen Farrell, who had a high tackle just before the World Cup, should have got banned, got banned for four weeks, where the guy from Namibia gets about 12 weeks. It is ridiculous. World rugby is killing the game at the moment, and I love this sport. I'm one of the most passionate um, supporters of the game. But what does it say to us? Like, I'm still very young. I'm 23, and I'm planning on doing rugby content for the longest of time, okay? For the foreseeable future, because I love it. It's my passion, and I love talking to you guys. I love interacting with you guys. But what... What example does this set to, to more people that want to create rugby content? Because most of the rugby channels are the older generation. Okay, now they're not very old. They're not like Matt Williams old or anything. But it's the older generation. You don't know how much they're still going to do it. You want the new generation coming through to have just as much, pas as, Matt, as, as much passion about the game. To continue creating content for the sport, promoting the sport. What does it tell us if we can't even use a clip of a game, an image of a game, anything to, to promote our channel, to, to showcase what we are talking about? Like I'm sitting here and I'm going to throw the two Twitter posts up um, for you guys to see that I'm using. I can't use a rugby clip. I can't use any of it because it could get taken down. Like how does that exp in inspire my generation, for instance, to continue making rugby content when we know we're just going to get pummeled by world rugby itself. It's ridiculous. Let me know what you thought about it. This this was just a rant. Tomorrow we'll go through some of the news that that went through um, last week, like Eddie Jones, uh, Rasi Rasmus, Razor, um, what's it, Scott Robertson. We'll get through all of that. But... I'm very annoyed about this. This is this is so frustrating. Let me know what you thought about it. Sorry about the messy air, the messy look, everything. Just got back from work. Thank you, guys. Enjoy it. See you next time. One, one.